Welcome to Key Shop in part three of the Cyclone Separator Dust Collection Series. In this part, we'll complete the fabrication of the unit and demonstrate how it works. Uh, glad you could be with us, and I'd appreciate any feedback. Have a great day, and enjoy. Okay, as we start this, I first started with the uh, collection bin and modifying this. This is actually a 55-gallon drum rain barrel that uh, was recycled because we never connected it up as a rain barrel. And the thing about it is it, um, it, uh, it actually has more straight edges than some of the barrels, which are uh, curved in quite a bit. I originally was going to use a 44-gallon uh, brute trash can, but some stated in some of the YouTube videos that they collapse uh, with uh, high vacuum and the uh, this barrel is much thicker than that so it uh, works out great and I've had no issues with it at all I also like the translucent white that you can somewhat see the level of the uh, dust or the chips in it um, from across the room in a lighted room I also am considering possibly putting a light inside to help that out a little bit Okay, so I marked how much I was going to cut off of this around the uh, edge of the uh, top edge of the bin itself, and I made a little jig uh, to ride along the outside edge of here. This this uh, rail here rides along the outside of it on my uh, circular saw, so it made cutting it very easy. I also used some bar clamps to keep it from rolling as much as I could during uh, cutting of this. Next, uh, now that we've cut that off, I needed to add uh, a rim and a handle so it makes it easier to handle when you uh, empty it and um, putting it back in. So with that, I took uh, some three-quarter inch plywood and um, I cut both pieces independently because even though they are the sides are fairly straight, there is a slight taper to them. So I made one of the um, cutouts just a little bit less than the other, used a circle cutting jig for that, and uh, stepped in it. So I think it probably took about four passes around, uh, gradually uh, increasing the depth of the bit to uh, cut it out. I also cut, uh, use a Forstner bit to cut uh, round holes at the end of the um, handle which then I went ahead and cut straight across when I was done here. Once I was done, um, never can have too many clamps, right? I glued the two pieces of plywood together as they were fitted over the uh, drum that made it uh, much easier to align them and get the, um, get the piece put together. When I was done then I uh, completed it all up, sanded it. There were a couple voids in the plywood because it wasn't the best grade plywood I was using for this piece of it. And I just used the auto body filler similar to what I used on the um, ramp for inside the uh, cylinder and patched up a few places, primed it and painted it. And I really like how it goes. I also put um, uh, one inch screws at uh, about, I don't know, six inch intervals or so around the perimeter to um, to uh, fasten the uh, rim to the barrel itself. And before I put it on though, I did one check thing. I wanted to add some cleats to the bottom of the um, panel that holds the cylinder. So this is actually upside down and I aligned where the a barrel would be centered on the cylinder itself and then added these cleats in there so it makes it very easy to um, to uh, replace uh, the barrel and not have to worry about the alignment of the cylinder or where the um, I added some foam um, gap filler insulation in there too. In fact, you can see it right here. Now, the one thing I did originally, I tried to center the um, the foam weather stripping on the lip of the uh, uh, barrel rim itself, and I found that a lot of dust collected between the foam and the inside of the barrel. So when I 
uh, took the uh, total, total unit apart to repaint it, I took that uh, time to, to center the foam more on the inside edge of the barrel so I don't get any build up there and it's working much better that way. Then I took the cart, which I had cut down from the larger cart of my old dust collector, and I added some um, backing boards uh, just to help hold the, uh, the vertical pieces so I could put little longer screws in and not worry about that. I also added four pads in each of the corner for the new uh, four inch um, swivel casters on that. And by the way, the casters were double locking, that is they kept from rotating as well as swiveling. And there's the completed uh, unit itself and now it's ready to start doing some uprights for it. Uh, before I did that though, and before I can size that, I needed to figure out how to put my platform to raise and lower it. And as I mentioned earlier, I uh, developed a cam lever system to raise it and lower it. And in this particular case, I've shown the barrel platform in the raise position. So when the um, cross dowel is in this position itself, when you rotate this handle up and around, then the dowel is in the lower position and it actually lowers the um, shelf itself. In order to keep the, the clearance of the dowels, I needed to add a half inch spacer in the bottom here just to raise the whole cam up above the uh, lip of the cart itself. And just the front cams um, have the handles on them. Uh, the back cams don't need the handles because I'm only operating it from the front. And the diameter of this or the height of the, um, of the cam assembly itself is four inches. And I'm using a one inch diameter dowel to, to uh, uh, hold the uh, barrel platform itself and the the offset of this, which is uh, 5 eighths of, of an inch from the center, provides a one and a quarter inch uh, rise and fall of the platform, which is more than enough to slide it out, empty it, and slide it back in. And these are the uh, dowels uh, with the um, cams uh, associated with it that I put together. And again, the handles are only gonna be on the front side of it. And I didn't make them round all the way around because I wanted a positive stop when you're up and when you're down. And so I left them flat on the one side, both in the front and the back on, the, on these pieces. And I added a the half inch cam pad on here. And remember on the shoot, input shoot to the cylinder, I said I added some laminate uh, that I had uh, left over from uh, another project. And I just added that to help make it a little uh, slicker for turning. Now this is the platform itself upside down. And uh, you'll notice here I have some levelers on that. You know, what are the chances that I assemble this whole thing and it doesn't quite fit tight up against the, the bottom uh, plate of the cylinder? So I added just a platform here with the levelers and, you know, it has a little wing, wing coming out here. And I ran a quarter 20 inch um, uh, bolt up through here. So once I get it all together, I could then raise the uh, platform to its highest position and then I could lower these levelers which actually raises the barrel a little bit more till I get a really nice tight seal against the, um, the weather stripping in the bottom of the uh, platform or the plate, uh, the cylinder. And you can see where the, the um, dowel fits in here now um, for doing that adjustment. Now, naturally I had to test it to make sure that dowel, that one inch dowel could support the weight that's gonna be in a barrel. So I sort of went overboard and each of these trash cans is full of sawdust and chips, plus each of the 
five gallon buckets is full of um, either joint compound or paint so it was a lot of weight and more than I would ever expect to have on that and I was able to raise and lower this just fine even with all that weight on it given the leverage of the cam. All right, now comes time to try to start putting it all together and then make the side frames for it. So I put the, um, put the cam assembly on the, uh, on the uh, cart itself, put the platform on top of that, put the barrel on top of that with the weather stripping in there, and uh, put the uh, top assembly, which I had finished in the prior video, up on top of that. Now I can do some measurements to know where this shelf is going to, this uh, you know, plate's going to come, as well as the top plate comes, so I can make the columns for it. And here it is with the columns on it. It's just two by fours, and the uh, cross two by four piece acts as a support of the bottom plate, and another two by four acts as a top uh, support of the top plate. Now the one thing that I had to do here is this is the input chute. I sort of had to put a little um, assembly around that instead of coming straight across. The backside piece just went straight across. That was an easy one. So now I've got all that done and and can be good to go here for doing um, doing the rest of the assembly. And here's the completed unit then with the plenum up on top. This is all open here and just a frame around it, but that attaches then in a uh, dado into the um, plenum itself to help support that. And I have the filters then um, just attached on studs that go up into the bottom plate of the plenum. And uh, for, for the fil fine filtration. So I'm ready to do some testing now. Now, eventually, I did upgrade the blower to a 4 horsepower, 14-inch blower before painting, and I'll show that in a separate video after the uh, testing video that will come next. And here's the completed unit, and I'm real pleased at how it's uh, turned out. Um, I used uh, Rust-Oleum spray, uh, I think it's Hammerite uh, color for it. Uh, they were discontinuing it at Home Depot and I cleaned them out and and that worked pretty well and I like that. Again I added then these uh, gauges here. This gauge on the left is um, it's a Dwyer Magnahelic I bought off eBay and I think it goes up to whoops it goes up to I think 20 inches water column here and the right one goes up to 5 inches water column and Right now, the, the right one hardly moves. I get like three-tenths of an inch uh, movement back pressure given the two uh, um, filter units. On the input side, after I've done the testing, and I'll show that in the next video, I went and calibrated uh, what, the, um, what the pressure is right here in the chute. So I know that if I'm reading, say, five inches water column, I know what the CFM is here, and I just a cross-reference cross thing here. And by the way, this one actually shows the new blower, and I'll have a separate video on how I built the blower for that. This is the right view of it with the uh, two uh, Win environmental uh, cartridge filters. Been very pleased with them so far. And this is the back view of it. And you can see actually the cleats that uh, work with the um, lip of the barrel to keep it from going back any further. And this is the right side. And I put a 45 uh, elbow on here that seems to work well with my hose that I connect up here. Um, eventually, I may connect uh, some permanent piping to this and come straight out of this uh, straight pipe that's going into the uh, cylinder but right now this really works well and I can also again I'm using six inch hose I can also use four inch hose I have a six to four inch adapter I can just slip on the end here and uh, do that.
Hi, I'm going to demonstrate how to empty the bin on the uh, dust collector I've developed. And I've uh, got the bin here, and I've developed two cam levers here that lower the bin down. So all you do is take these, rotate them out, pull the bin out, and um, empty the dust. And I've got cleats up here that align it, so all you do is push it back into place, rotate the the cams back up and you're good to go. Very easy. And even if the bin is very full with the leverage on the cams it makes it very easy to lower it and raise it. Okay I'm going to demonstrate here how the dust collection works and I have a bin here uh, with a mixture of chips and, and uh, fine dust. pick it up with the six inch hose here and this is probably more uh, chips at any one time going through the system than normally would be going through from collecting from a machine but you can see the cyclonic action going on here and it doesn't take long to clear it out once you stop putting chips in it either it clears out pretty good then the chips fall through the slot down into the bin And this completes part three of the Cyclone Separator video series. I thank you for watching and look for part four, which I'll start talking about how I tested the unit and the, uh, and the capabilities of uh, CFM versus static pressure there. Thanks and have a great day.